Hello there, IELTS students. Welcome to IELTS Podcast. You no longer have to worry, fret, or panic about IELTS because we are here to guide you through this test jungle. Enjoy these IELTS tutorials, and if you need more help or want to access the famous online course, you can visit us at IELTSpodcast.com. Hi there, this is Ben. Before we start this tutorial, I would like to just say a big thanks to our sponsor, ElsaSpeak.com. ElsaSpeak is a pronunciation app specifically made to help non-native English speakers improve their pronunciation. Now, it's great for IELTS because you can get instant feedback, which helps you improve quicker. And also, you can judge where you are. You get uh, an estimate of your level. And then this can help you if you are wondering whether you should take the test again, because this way you can measure and see if you've improved. Now, at the end of this tutorial, I will tell you how you can get a 40% discount on the annual subscription. Also, remember, we've got the Speaking Confidence course. We're getting some fantastic results with that. And also the sentence guide course or jump to band seven or it's free. We are seeing some great results with that. And big thank you to Mika, who's just recently joined us and his essays are already improving. So that is fantastic. Hi, our students. My name's Daphne. Great to have you with us here for this next tutorial from IELTSpodcast.com. Today, we're going to be looking at the really difficult issue of adding examples into your IELTS essay. This is something that a lot of people find really hard, not surprising. There's so many different ideas out there on the websites on how to do it, what to do, should you do this, shouldn't you do this, can I use a personal example, can't I? So we're going to try and uh, get into this in a bit more detail today. What I want to do is also give you some really good key phrases which you can use. This will really help you in the structure of your essay. So making sure your essay is really coherent. Coherence and cohesion is one of the main section sections that you are marked on. So we want to make sure you score as good a grade as you possibly can here. So before we start, why don't you go and get a pen and paper and then you can write down some of these key phrases and immediately start using them in your essays. And talking about essays, if you need some feedback on your IELTS essay, if you're not sure if you're doing the right thing, if you're studying at home, if you failed and you don't know why you failed, then send us an essay for correction. We will give you some really, really good, personalised, helpful, constructive feedback. This will help you to improve. And in our experience, this is just the best way to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes again and you move forward with your preparation, which is what you want to do. So my name's Daphne. I work with Ben and the team here. My IELTS story, I suppose, um, I've been teaching IELTS for around about seven, eight years now and specialize really in IELTS writing. So writing and speaking are the two things that I work with with most of our students here. Something that I really, really enjoy doing. The writing for me is, I know, a challenge. So I really feel hopefully that I can help people just guide you along the way. Even for a native writer, by the way, these essays are really hard and you are having to show a great range of vocabulary and as well in that short space of time you have to add in examples, you have to show grammar, there's an awful lot to think about in that 300-350 words. Okay, so let's look at examples. So one of the questions that a lot of people ask is, first, is it okay to add a personal example from your life or your job? Is it okay to make up fake research and reports? And another question that we get often asked is, do you have to give an example in every paragraph? What we're going to do today in this tutorial is look at seven simple sentence constructions and tips that you can effectively use to ensure grammatically free error, uh, sorry, grammatically error-free structures in your paragraphs when you add examples. 
So we're looking at a really good start to a sentence. If you start the sentence correctly in a good grammatical structure, you're going to continue it in that way. So the first question, let's have a look at this. Is it okay to add a personal example? And IELTS is tricky on this, as you well know, because quite often the prompt says something like, give reasons for your answer, include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience. Now, if I didn't know about IELTS writing, I would think, oh, okay, that's great. I'll just talk about my life or my friends or my parents or my university or my job or whatever. But you can't do this. It's a sort of secret rule in IELTS that they don't tell you. But remember, now you know, it's not okay to give a personal example. An IELTS essay is not the right place for an anecdote about your job, your family, your friend, or the traffic jams in your city. But what you can do is use those ideas and transform them. Form them. Now, there's a whole module in the course, so the full sentence guide course, there's a whole module on exactly how to do this. And for me, honestly, it's one of the most important modules in the whole course. Once you've understood how to do this, it will really help you on your planning, on your writing, on the coherence and on the task achievement. It's a really, really good thing to know how to do. What you need to do is take your example, okay, maybe about traffic jams or something, and transform it and depersonalize it. So instead of when I go to work, I always sit in a traffic jam, you can transform that by thinking about maybe a geopolitical argument. So something that's local to your country or your continent. So it's well known that traffic jams in India are 10 times worse than they were only five years ago something like that. So you're taking your knowledge of the traffic jam and you're transforming it into something geopolitical, so related to your area. Uh, you might want to transform it into something political. So you might want to talk about a government initiative to reduce traffic jams, rather than, again, your personal frustration with traffic jams. So what you're doing by transforming this example is that you're making it more academic and you're making it more specific. So you're making it specific to a country. You could even include a company name if it's relating to a company or a business, something like that. But what you're doing is not talking about what you feel and your frustration in these little domestic things we have to deal with. So let's look first at using an example in an introduction of the essay. So I know we don't actually give an example in the introduction, but quite often when it says, using examples, you have to lead the examiner into your essay. The introduction is really important. And for me, it's important that you get some decent content into the introduction. It's not okay just to transform the prompt or re paraphrase the prompt and then say, I agree. You need to make it exciting. You need to bring the examiner with you. You need to make the examiner want to read on. And remember, the examiner gets a pretty good impression from the introduction as to what band score you're going to be. So if you come in there with a really punchy, excellent introduction, the examiner is going to be sitting up thinking, OK, this is going to be good. I'm interested. So make your introduction work for you. So you're going to paraphrase the prompt. That's the question. Show you really understand it. And then you're going to add some content. So don't make it too bland. You want to hook that examiner so they keep reading. Let me read you a question and then I'll read you an introduction from a student of ours. So some people think public libraries are necessary. Others believe that public libraries are useless. What is your opinion? And provide some relevant examples. So the student writes, the topic of the necessity to provide public libraries has grown in importance over the last few decades. Experts have suggested that libraries are still crucial for society in order to read and study and should not be removed, although critics disagree. So that's a nice way of paraphrasing that question. Then the student carries on. This essay will discuss the key arguments and inclu including why I agree 
that having public libraries available for people is still relevant and useful. So what I really like there, this phrase, this essay will discuss the key arguments, including why I agree. So they've given their opinion there in quite a subtle way. They've said that there's going to be arguments coming up and they're going to then talk about examples. So this essay will discuss the key arguments, using, including why I agree that having public libraries available for people is still relevant and useful. Here we go for the examples. Using examples from local Moscow newspaper reports and the Russian State University. So I know exactly where this essay is going to go. I know it, the student thinks they're important and is going to argue that they're relevant and useful. And I know the student's going to use examples from this Moscow newspaper and the Russian State University. So I'm happy with that introduction. It's telling me what I'm going to read and it's leading me into this essay. So for me, that works very nicely in the introduction. So there's key phrases, and you could write these down now so that will just give you these sentences. You can use them in your essays. So this essay will discuss the key arguments, including why. So I really, really like that, including why, and then giving an opinion. Or this essay will analyze this issue using examples from and then you're going to say where they're coming from. Or using examples to demonstrate points and support arguments. So you're going to need to supply the examples connected to the topic. You're going to need to add the relevant universities. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But the sentences you want are things like this essay will analyze this issue or these issues using examples from wartime countries and conflict zones to demonstrate po demonstrate points or using examples from Canada, Australia and Rwanda to demonstrate points. So you're going to put in the relevant content. If you are a little bit unsure on these introductions, even if you're just beginning your IELTS journey, if you want to practice your coherence, if you're not sure about these introductions and what to do, then sign up for our newsletter. That is the best way to find out what we're doing here and find out about all our special offers. Send us an essay for correction, like I said before. Get some feedback. Find out how you're doing. Say, hey, is this introduction okay? Am I on the right track here? And once you've got the feedback, then you're really, really going to progress quickly. So key phrase two is talking about studies. So using examples inside your body paragraphs. We've looked at the introduction. We're going to look at now the kind of proper, really well-organized examples that are going to go into your paragraphs. And the second question that we were asking at the beginning was, is it OK to make up fake research and reports? And to be honest, this is a very difficult question. And you'll find lots of examples and opinions online. My suggestion to you is that you practice this kind of structure when you're working on the coherence of your paragraphs, when you're getting to grips with your essay layout, when you're understanding how the coherence and cohesion works, when you're maximizing your task achievement, then I think you need to have these quite set structures in there. Once you've got a better control over your writing, once you've got a bit more confidence, once you really know what you can doing, what you're doing, you can be a bit more flexible. And it's important not to copy exactly the same thing every time because that doesn't sound natural and it risks not being relevant. So what I would say is use with caution and as you get more confident, then you can experiment with different ways of doing this and you can, as we say, mix it up a bit. While you're working on your coherence, really getting that paragraph in the best order possible, try something like this. So you want to cite an example from a study. You could use the phrase, for example, a recent study by someone showed da da da. So take a note of that one. A recent study by someone showed. So let's see how that works. Recent study by the IMF or by the World Bank or by the UK government showed. And then quite often we're going to have that word that showed that, which takes you into a really nice structure. Showed that, um, 
many companies had benefited from this policy of support. So once you come into that clause, you know where you're going. And you're going to supply details of these findings that you're talking about. Let me read you a title and read you an example here from a body paragraph. So this title was, In many workplaces, online communication is now more common than face-to-face meetings. Do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? So the student here is talking about how so much more is online and is it more advantageous? Is there a benefit to people working on Zoom or meeting on Zoom compared to before when people used to have meetings fly around the world to meet each other face to face? So in the example in the first body paragraph, the student writes, for example, comma, Recent studies from a Brazil institute have found that work tasks which were implemented remotely by management are twice as likely to be incomplete or mistakenly misinterpreted. Therefore, those people in favour of tradition tradition in-person real-life meetings advocate this is the more effective way to lead a team or negotiate. So that's a really lovely example there. Quite a lot to take in. And the second part of that, therefore, we're going to look at a bit later. So keep listening to find out how to use these therefore sentences. But for now, just look at this one again. For example, recent studies from a Brazil institute have found that, we've got that keyword that, work tasks which were implemented remotely by management are twice as likely to be incomplete or mistakenly misinterpreted. So that's a really fantastic structure there. You've got the that clause, then you've got a relative clause which were implemented remotely by management and then are twice as likely. So you've got a lot of grammar going on in that sentence. But the first bit, for example, recent studies from a Brazil Institute have found that is a fantastic way to start off that example. So that's a good structure for you for the body paragraph. You don't have to use the word studies. You can mix it up. You can use the word research or you could use the word report. So But make sure that you've got your noun verb agreements going on here and watch out for articles. This is a tricky one. A lot of errors here. Watch out. So if we're using research, research works like a plural. Here's an example. Take, for instance, recent research by. So I'm not saying a recent research. I'm saying recent research. Take, for instance, recent research by the uh, UK government, for example, which clearly showed that. So I'm using research, there's no article. Take, for instance, recent research, which. So here we go here. Take, for example, we'll take, for instance, recent research by the Italian health authorities that clearly showed an increase in the use of antibiotics over the past 10 years. Take, for instance, recent research by the Italian health authorities that clearly showed an increase in the use of antibiotics over the past 10 years. You might notice that not only I'm using research correctly without the article, but I've gone into the past tense. Uh, I'm talking about recent study, but I'm going to use it like reported speech in the past tense. This is because it's going to add more variety. It's very easy sometimes in these essays to find you've written the whole thing in the present tense without really even realising. What you need to show to the examiner, not only this great coherence, but grammatical range and accuracy. So by putting in a past tense, by using it successfully, by using it accurately, I'm going to show that I have a bit of range on my grammar. And obviously that's something that I'm going to be scored on. So if you can get your example into the past tense, you that is a really good thing to try and do so that's using research recent research we could also use report but with report you do need the article again so uh, we could say a recent report by the french medical agency or by a french medical agency or a recent report in a french newspaper i quite like that by the way i quite like referring to newspapers or online magazines because the examiner won't know if you've read that or not. 
The danger with using reports is that normally in academic writing, when you're referring to a report, you have to reference it. And in an IELTS essay, you are not referencing. So this is one of the reasons why a lot of people are cautious about using studies or research, because we're not referencing it in the way that you would in a normal academic essay. So if you're kind of really cautious on that, go with online newspaper or online magazine in your country. Because for me, that feels, you know, maybe more, maybe safer. Uh, you won't get criticised for a report which doesn't exist. So we could say uh, a recent uh, report in an online newspaper in Italy suggested that health authorities um, have understood the increase, there's an increase in the use of antibiotics. So there's different ways of doing this, and this is what I mean about being flexible. Here's one, a good example here. A recently published re report, that's nice, a recently published report by Amnesty International indicated that due to the poor living conditions in Africa, the mortality of children has grown by up to 50%. So that's a really nice way of bringing in that report, and that's giving a great example to support the points that have just been made previously in that paragraph. The next key phrase I want to talk about is using hedging, academic hedging. So academic hedging, I talk about this a lot when I'm correcting some of your essays. This is using more suggestive language, using more modal verbs, those fantastic modal verbs such as could, might, may. So could, might, may. They're wonderful words to change or substitute for can and will. A lot of people uh, write essays saying this will happen. Now, we don't know whether this will happen or not, but you can say there's evidence to suggest that these developments might happen within the next 10 years. So you can use your lovely key phrase, Here's another key phrase, number four. There's ample evidence to suggest that. But come into afterwards, that after that, use your modal verb. Use this lovely academic hedging language to then keep your writing as high level as you possibly can. So this next phrase, write this one down. There's ample evidence to suggest that. Ample, that means a lot. Yeah, there's much evidence you could also say. So there's ample evidence to suggest, there's much evidence to suggest, or to indicate is another word for suggest. So we could say, there's evidence or there's much evidence to suggest that scientists may even have developed a new vaccine or a new drug um, in, this, in the next few years. So we're using those modal verbs, may or might or could, to suggest something rather than to come in with a very strong sentence. So that's very important for me, those kind of subtle little uh, extras that you can be adding to your essay, adding value. If you think that grammar is something you're not too confident about, it is really important for IELTS to have a good level of grammar. So if you're not sure about your grammar, have a look at the course have a look at the grammar structures that we talk about on the course. We'll give you lots of practice on those, lots of different ways to use great grammatical structures in your essay. And lots of practice because by getting feedback, as we say, by getting feedback is the best way for you to improve. Look at the website. There's a lot of content about grammar on the website. Sign up for the newsletters and of course, look at the sentence guide course because that will help you. So key phrase number five, and here we're going to hand this over to the experts. So IELTS essays often use the word expert. And there's two things here, isn't there? So which expert? Which expert are we talking about? And who is this expert? So we can use an adjective very easily here. And we can transform these words to make these experts relevant and valuable and personal for your essay. This will help you on task achievement. So rather than going, this is talking about uh, bees and the environment, rather than saying experts found that if bees disappeared, we can make this a little bit more interesting. 
Finnish scientists found that if bees completely vanished from Earth, five years later, humans would no longer exist. So, very important, this idea. Rather than going experts, let's make it relevant for this essay. Finnish, so they're from Finland, and they're scientists. So they're not experts in that generic word, they're specifically scientists. Finnish scientists found that if bees completely vanished from Earth, five years later, humans would no longer exist. Now, what is really lovely here in this structure, and you may have noticed, you've got your Finnish scientists found that, so you've got a that clause, but instantly the student's going into a conditional. If bees completely vanished from Earth, comma, five years later, comma, humans would no longer exist. So second conditional structure following that example. Now, for me, excellent work. Packed in with points, that particular thing. You've got the names of the people, so you've got vocabulary, Finnish experts. You've got the past tense, found that, and then you're going into your conditional, if bees completely vanished. So note down that sort of structure. Practice using that in your essays. See how it works for you. Really, really good. There's another one here. It doesn't have to be experts. We can talk about professional people. We can talk about teachers, educators. We can talk about parents, goodness me. There's a lot of essays talking about families, aren't there? Or practitioners. That's quite a useful word here. Many traditional practitioners have claimed that this tried and tested method works best due to whatever. You can carry on after that. But many traditional practitioners have claimed that, again, and then this tried and tested method works best. So these phrases here, handing it to the experts, we've got Finnish experts found that, or we've got many traditional practitioners have claimed that, present perfect. So great examples. Hope you're writing these all down. Hope you're going to be using them. I really look forward to reading them when you send us your essay for some feedback. It's going to be great. So number six, key phrase number six. If you want something more subtle, if you feel, ah, these reports aren't for me, I just need a better way of doing this, here are two more ways that you could do. So a good illustration of this. A good illustration of this is another way to start an example, to signal to the examiner that an, exa that an example is coming. And I quite like this because... It means you have to have a clear argument before, because you're giving a good illustration of this. This is the point you've just made. So the coherence is going to be very strong here. And then you're also going to back it up. So it forces you to back up that argument. So listen to this one. Children are often exposed to too much screen time without realizing it. A good illustration of this is when they're doing homework, which requires online research. But because this is not gaming or social media, they tend not to count it as screen time hours. So a good, good illustration of this is when they're doing homework. So we're not using that. Here we're using when because it's referring to a time. So a good, good illustration of this is when they're doing homework, which requires online research. And, but because this is not gaming or social media, they tend not to count it as screen time hours. So I really like that one. For me, that comes into the paragraph quite subtly. And it, you want to have a really coherent essay without using a recent study shows that. This is a good way to do it. And remember, what we've been doing here a lot is signposting these examples. So we've been saying, for example, we've been saying a recent study. So the examiner knows what's coming next. We don't have to start with such an obvious signpost word, for example. Examples are often facts that we've observed in the real world. Remember what we said about taking the personal and making it general, making it, transforming it. So we can make clear that the information is factual simply by starting with in fact. In students, in fact, despite good intentions, often resort to eating an unhealthy diet simply because they're working into the night and so their sleep patterns are disrupted. So I'm giving an example of students who have a bad eating habit, but I'm doing it in a much more subtle way. So students, in fact, here's my kind of example, in fact, 
despite good intentions, resort to eating on a healthy diet simply because they're working into the night so their sleep patterns are disrupted. Here's another example using that same structure. In fact, it's often acknowledged that while well-paid jobs are desired by graduates, these are rare and internships are more frequently offered than financially secure long-term positions. So in fact, it's often acknowledged that. So I really like that. It's often acknowledged that as a passive, that while well-paid jobs are desired by graduates, these are rare and internships are more frequently offered than financially secure long-term positions. So really nice ways of adding an example, but in a slightly more subtle way. Don't forget, you can also use an opposing thought. So rather than using however, if you want to have a different point of view here, you can put however, it should not be forgotten that. Yeah, the importance of eating a healthy diet should be considered at all times. Something like that. So you can just add in a little bit of extra value there by using that however. So key phrase seven, this is using therefore. So very important because we're looking at the coherence of this essay. You've made your points in your body paragraph, you've added your example, but we need to kind of connect the example back to the question. You can't put an example in there and just leave it in midair. The example has to be connected back to the question. So let me show you what I mean here. So this is my example. Also, research has proven that the progression of language learning is faster in those who've been immersed in a country for a period of three months or more, as this allows the brain to work more efficiently than taking lessons once a week. Therefore, more and more students are opting to study abroad rather than stay in their home country when learning a language. So I'm using my example. I'm introducing it through any of these various phrases we've been talking about today. Then my last line in that paragraph is going to link my example back to the question. So let me give you another example of this. Let's go back to the bees. Finnish scientists found that if bees completely vanished from Earth five years later, humans would no longer exist. Therefore, it's of the utmost importance to install and fund conservation programs and promote ideas in order to save every wildlife form. That ends my paragraph really nicely. That links me back up to that question. So using therefore in that sort of structure just finishes my paragraph really nicely. So have a look, that's number seven, using therefore. So we've looked at a lot of different ways. Let me rewind, let me just go back to those. Key phrase one was in the introductions. This essay will discuss the arguments, including why. Key phrase two was referring to studies, using examples. So for example, a recent study by somebody showed or has shown. Number three was not using the word study, but using the word research, careful with no article or report, so a report. So using the word research or report, take for instance, a recent report by. The idea four was using, <clears throat> there's ample evidence to suggest that, but using more academic hedging. So there's ample evidence to suggest that this might change, this trend might develop or could develop faster. So ample evidence. Key phrase five, getting the experts involved. Finnish experts found about the bees or many traditional practitioners have claimed that. Make your ex expert relevant to your essay. Could be a scientist, could be a teacher, could be a medical researcher. Make it relevant. Key phrase six, which was going for something a bit more subtle, using a good illustration of this is, or using in fact. So in fact students, or in fact despite good intentions, students resort to eating an unhealthy diet. So there was this two slightly more subtle ways of doing it. And then don't forget, number seven, coming back to the beginning. So following that example, you could use a therefore structure to link the example right back up to the question. And by using this kind of coherent structure, you will make sure not only do you score a fantastic mark 
on your coherence and cohesion. But you score well on task achievement because if you're writing essays with this kind of structure, you have to stay on point. You have to answer the right question. You won't run away with a different essay structure or different essay topic, which happens very often. So as I said before, check in with us, check into the newsletter, check in, get your essay corrected, get some feedback. If you are really not sure what you're doing on the IELTS, if this is new to you, all this, then get involved with us on the Sentence Guide course, which offers you lots of videos, little modules, little lessons on how to get it right, how to really structure your essay. So thank you for tuning in today. I'm Daphne. Really hope these have been useful for you. Hope you've managed to write them all down and look forward to reading them in your essays soon. And just before we finish, I'd like to say a big thanks again to our sponsor, elsaspeak.com. With this app, which is available on Android and iPhone, you can get instant feedback. You can judge what level your pronunciation is and there are exercises there as well to help keep you improving and working towards your IELTS exam and as I said at the beginning if you follow this link elsaspeak.com forward slash inf forward slash IELTS podcast you can get 40% off an annual subscription and also there you can get 85% off for the lifetime and you can also try it actually if you go to you can try the pro for free if you go to the link inside the post okay inside the blog post at ielspodcast.com my name is ben thank you very much for listening and i wish you all the best with your ielts preparation IELTSPodcast.com